I said no calls. Oh, now, is that Sir Edward? Who is this? Let's just say I'm somebody you really don't want to ignore. I beg your pardon? You've caused a lot of misery in your time, haven't you? Mind you, so have I. And the only difference is that I knew the names of the people I was hurting. And as far as I was concerned, they deserved everything they got. But you, you never knew the names of any of your victims, did you? And they certainly didn't deserve what they were getting from you. I don't know who you are or what you're hoping to achieve. What I want is for you to return every penny you've stolen. I'm sorry. Uh, I, th I thought you said... Did Mark Twain say something good? He said, do the right thing. It will gratify some people and astonish others. Mark Twain also said, to succeed in life, you need two things. Ignorance and confidence. Yeah, clever old sod, wasn't he? And you, sir, are not. You yeah, certainly have ignorance, and it would seem confidence, but you are not going to succeed in whatever it is you're trying to do. Unlike banking, my line of work is dependent on results, and that's what I get. In my line of work, we approach business in two ways. If you're in the investment market, you're a bull or a bear. What's your point? Well, there's a 16th century proverb. Don't sell the bear's skin before you've killed him. Maybe you should be more cautious with your threats. Maybe we've done enough quoting for one day, eh? Just fucking give it back. I don't run a successful bank by giving money away. I'm successful because I fucking take money. I'll take that as a no, then. I must say, he didn't seem too keen. Sounds like it's time for plan B, then. Tin man, come in. Oh, for fuck's sake, which button do I press? It's the button on the side. Oh, come on, come on, Richard, I'm just winding you up. Oh, very droll. Everything clear out there? Yes, yes, just be in the moonlight. How are the old ladies doing? A Roy keeps moaning about his shoulder, but we're getting there. I better see what they're doing. Yeah, well, I'll see you soon. Hey. I was saying, I wish we'd had one of these back in the day. What's a break through the brickwork, you mean? No, the shins. I wouldn't have this twinge in my shoulder if it hadn't been for those fucking hand drills. Gentlemen, let's not forget we're on the clock here. Ten minutes, 15 tops. You said that bleeding half hour ago. This is a precision job. Oh, sod that boot bleeding. No, off. don't do that. Don't do that. Well, that was a lucky swing. It's all in the shoulders, boys. Boy, I'd take the piss. Gentlemen. Come on, give us a hand with this. <sighs> See if the old magic's still there, shall we? Hmm. Is that a good hum or a bad hum? Pony says he'll piss it. There you go. What did I say? Oh, what with your back and my shoulder. How come Butch never ended up with any career side effects? I keep telling everyone. I'm the young gun on the firm. Yeah. Magenta. Well, what's the difference? It's the difference between the alarms going off and the alarms not going off. Oh, yeah. No, that's magenta. So I cut this one, right? Boy. Please.
Everything has its limit. I and all cannot be educated into gold. What? Mark Twain. Oh, yeah. Mark who? Everything has its limit. All right, let's get to work, shall we? Who's in charge? No, I am. What's going on? You're being robbed. Oh, that's not good. Oh, please! Don't move! Don't move! Oh, please! I guess you caught us red-handed. Put it down, right? Let's go. Move. Move. Run me out, run me out, run me out, go ahead. I'll just go to E2, but then it details your call. Okay, we read you en route. Fuck, I've got to go. You. What's your name? Dave. Dave. Do you think you can handle those fellas? Three old geezers. Yeah. Yeah, right. We're on our way. Just say that you caught them, OK? What? Saves me doing the paperwork. You might even get a rise or something. Yeah? Uh... And get rid of all that security footage. Us arriving. Just pretend that they cut the wires or something. Uh... Good boy. Lizzie Davis. Hello, Anne-Marie. Well, you look well. You too. I can see why Richie's heart was set aflutter again. So, I was asked... Well, uh, no, actually, I was told by your goons that you wanted to see me. Well, well, you've toughened up. Not the girl I remember. Yeah, well, I'm not a girl anymore, am I? None of us are girls anymore. Anyway, what do you want? You remember my parents? Yes, Anne-Marie, everyone knew your dad. Next Tuesday, he'd have spent 30 years in prison. My mother is about to die soon. Alzheimer's. Horrible fucking illness I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry. Uh, we found a clinic for her in Europe. They've been keeping her going in the hope that my father would be granted compassionate leave to be able to say goodbye to her in private. So they've refused him? Oh, they've toyed with us. Promised a review, and... But it's all bollocks. The previous prison governor even took our bribes and then didn't follow through on his promises. So previous... Right, OK. It was a terrible accident. Do you know, I've, I've got this funny feeling you want me to do something, and I just, for the life of me, can't work out what it is. How do you feel about Richie being caught? Um... <laughs> A few months back, I wouldn't have had any feelings one way or the other. But now, since he's charmed his way back into your life, Richie asked me to tell you to wait for him. He's spoken to you since he's been caught. Richie and I go back a long way. <laughs> There's the girl I remember. Anyway, they get up on the terrace, go through the French windows, nick all the tom, come out, and Gerald, he climbs all the way back down to the street level. Whereupon, the other fella leans over and says to him, Oi, get back up here. So he says, why? I've just come back down here. He said, get back up here. So he climbs all the way back up and gets onto the terrace. And he says, what? The other fella says, come over here and listen to this geezer snoring.
George Briggs. A legend, they tell me. Runs things in the prison I was warned be his friend, they advised. <laughs> you see, here's the thing. And you old bastards never seem to understand this. You think you're invincible. And on the outside, you may well have led a life that's afforded you protection. The kind of protection that most mere mortals cannot understand. But once you're in here, inside, away from those you pay to protect you, well, then you're just like everyone else. And you are old now. No one cares about you anymore. The world doesn't give a flying fuck about knowledge about the old way, about how things used to be, how they should be. The world has moved forward. But you keep hanging on to the good old days when respect meant something. Loss is a terrible thing. What are you talking about, loss of... I'm talking about the loss of manners, as you intended to interrupt me. I'm talking about the loss of respect for intelligence, old or young. We used to have confidence. Now all I see in your generation is arrogance. Pricks. And it went actually to good old days. But things were certainly a lot better back then. There was an order to things and a respect for those who earned it. You were promoted to governor here not because you were the best person for the job, but because your predecessor died and you were available. I was promoted to governor here because I can well deal with... Well done, Governor Price. Well done. You fooled them, but you didn't fool me. I know people like you. Behind your tough guy image, you're scared. I see from your file that you have applied for compassionate leave. I can see from your face you're not going to grant it. Well, your attitude towards me hasn't helped. I've lost faith in the system. I've lost my sense of humor since I've been in here. And now you've lost your chance to see your wife before she dies. Are you having any suicidal thoughts? No. Are you on drugs? Or any form of prescription? Well, I really pain. don't approve of drugs. Yes or no? No. Are you experiencing feelings of rage or violence? Go some fucking not! Are you a bedwetter? Did you ask the others that question? Is that a no? Richie Archer. Hmm. I've heard a lot about you. All good, I hope. No, Archer, not good at all. Robbery, extortion, kidnapping, arson, the list goes on and on. Yeah, now, that arson, that was just an unfortunate misunderstanding. And the papers just blew it out of all proportion. If I was you, I would ignore that. Enough! One. You will address me as governor. And you will afford my officers the courtesy of sir. Disrespect will not be tolerated. Do I make myself clear? Yes, yes, sir. Violence and aggressive behaviour will not be tolerated. Do I make myself clear? Yes, yes, sir. You will abide by the rules. Transgressions will not be tolerated. Yes. What, well, sir? Transgressions, mate. Not what he thinks they mean. <laughs> You think you're something special, don't you? Not at all. Not at all, sir. Not at all, sir. You think you can stroll in here like some King Big Dick? King what? Big Dick. Oh. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, oh, hey, hey, Butch, Butch. Think about it. Be under no illusion. I might be new here, but that means new rules. You step out of line, and I will not hesitate to crush you. 
Tell him, boys, Richie. He's just like a shit a lot, man. Tell him, boys, Roy. I've never seen it coming. Left. Over this way? Oh, this way. Okay. This way, Butch. Ah, here's your new cellmate. Hello, David. I've got a new playmate for you. I know you hate being on your lonesome. All right, fella. I'll leave you two to get acquainted. <laughs> Right, there you go. Home sweet home. I presume you still do room service. Snap. Shame. That would have saved a lot of time. You're a Cypress, all right. Richie Archer. <laughs> George. You look good. Don't lie, I'm tired. Well, that's what I came in. To repay my debt to you. What are Butch and Roy doing here? This was meant to be a one-man job. Yeah. You know what they're like. Well, to the last. More people means more risk. Don't worry, George. It's all in hand. She hasn't got much time. No, I know, I know. Well, you'll see Alice again. You've got my word on that. I know I can rely on you always could. Come, let's have a cup and have a chat. Liz? Jimmy Harper. <gasps> Not seen you for a long time. I'm over in Spain now. Got a nice little place just up the road from Richard's Gaff. Right. You all right, Liz? Yeah. Well, you know, it's... Well, it's all... Peaceful and... Nice and around here now, Richie's back, you know. But you're okay. Jimmy, did you know about this plan, this, this robbery? Of course. I was there. I stole the gold and. Uh... <laughs> that was very funny, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you do it, Jimmy? I mean, money? What was it? The adrenaline, the thrill, what? Do you fancy a pint? Louis, we haven't met. Uh, my name's Vic, how you doing? I live here too. I've been watching you, keeping an eye on you. You keep your head down like that, and you go about your business quietly, that's good. In fact, you know something? Whole Nick loves you. Please, uh, if you think I've done something, you're wrong. Oh, you misunderstand me. I don't think you've done anything wrong, Louis. In fact, on the contrary. So let me go, yeah? Please. Please let me go. First, I need a little favour. Anything, all you have to do is ask. <laughs> Louis, in this nick, I don't have to ask for anything. I'm a taking kind of guy. Tell me something. Do you know Richie Archer? The Archer guy? Yeah, everyone's heard of him. You want me to kill him for you? Tell me something. Have you ever killed anyone before? No. But is that what you want me to do? Well, you will one day, I suppose. And you'll remember your first forever. The terror in their eyes when you take their life. That's probably why I like taking them. No, no, what are you doing? No! <laughs> You're right, Louis. I do want Archer dead. Problem is, in a different nick. Dilemma is, how the fuck am I gonna get to him? I said I'd do what you want! You already are. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you do it? 
This was a cushy number. You aren't going to see luxury like this again. 357. What's that? 357. That's how many poxy fucking months I've spent banged up. That is 10,873 days. I might just have a crack at working out the hours and the minutes later on. You can't think like that, you go mad. I am fucking mad! For God's sake, shh. You've heard the news? About the Archer gang, yeah. I thought that'd make your day. Make my day? Richie Archer happens to be in a different fucking nick, 200 miles south of here. So reaching down his scrawny little neck and ripping out his heart is going to be a bit tricky, don't you think? It's open and shut. A die behind bars, no need to worry about that. Yeah? Well, natural causes doesn't do it for me, Donald. I mean, arrange something. No. No, I don't. I want to be there when it happens. I want to see it with my own eyes. I want him to know that I'm fucking responsible. But there is something else I want to do before I take Richie Archer's life. What do you need me to do? They're being held on remand at Belkinwood. Belkinwood's got a new governor. Your friend and my friend, Price. Price by name, Price by nature. Get Harry to have a little word with her, will you please? And see if she can well, arrange a little reunion. Yeah, but Vic, I'm... Just fucking do it! You have to do it, you know you do. It's just, it's, it's just not me, right? You know, I, I'm not part of your world. But you are. Like it or not, you're part of Richie's world, which means you're now part of my world. The Archer gang were a force to be reckoned with, and Richie was, well, Richie was many things. But you know how it all works. Yeah. Always someone above you, right? Richie, my father, God. Did you know that my father took the blame for one of Richie's crimes? Well, he was going down anyway, so he confessed to it. To keep Richie out. Well, wh what exactly do I, do, do, would I, well, what would I have to do? Talk to an old friend. Convince them that we need their help. Richie needs their help. What? Who? I mean, what the hell's going on? You know that phrase, I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you? <laughs> well, I will actually carry out that threat if you whisper a word of this to anyone. You should be here any minute. <laughs> Chaps, what's, what's, uh, what's, what's, what's this all about then, Mr. Briggs? I've been telling my friend, Richie, about your business here. Oh, yeah, what are you after? Smokes, chocky bars, jazz mags, that, that. No. <laughs> Fuck it, now. Things aren't... Things aren't exactly what you'd call, uh, What you call everyday items around here. Do you, do, you, do you know what I mean? I do, and no, they're not. And, and... It's gonna cost you. He's good for it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, give me a couple of days. I'll, uh, I'll see what I can do. Good lad. Sooner the better. Right. Twitchy bastard, isn't he? Well, well, well. Look who it is. Richie fucking Archer. I'm sorry, sir. You got me at a disadvantage. The name's Razor. And don't. Call me son. So, what happened? Had a bit of a senior moment, did you? I mean, fucking hell. Gold bullion. 
This ain't the fucking 80s no more, you silly old gits. You wanna learn some manners, my friend. And you wanna go and do a fucking jigsaw, Grandad. Watch your mouth. Gentlemen? So you know West End John? Oh, what do you make of that? Huh? <laughs> the world's a village. I've been holding out hope that Razor here will one day learn to respect his elders and betters. Come on, Razor. Apologize. I ain't apologizing to no one. I said apologize. <laughs> Just pissing about, ain't I? I wouldn't call that an apology. Say you're sorry. Sorry. Now sling it. What the fuck are you looking at? Seems like a nice boy. Adorable. What's their story? Oh, they've been scrapping each other for years. Some family thing long before they got here. Spider's all right. But Razor, I've had to threaten his outside mob a couple of times. Looks like he's due for a reminder. Hmm. Big Pharaoh's due to be transferred. And you, Mrs. Maestro, are gonna make sure he ends up in your prison. <laughs> you deaf. Fuck. <laughs> I've never killed a woman before. But with your job description, I'm willing to make an exception. I, I, I can't do that. That, that. That's impossible. Well, you better hope it ain't. Because if you don't get this thing done, I'm going to put big holes in you. Do you want that? Oh, didn't think so. You do so remind me of a very dear friend of mine. Stick him up. Chairs, you got something for me, I hope. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Let's, let's, uh, let's hope. <laughs> you, you know what I'm gonna say. Let's, let's, let's see it first. Sweet, sweet. Any of that, yeah. Mind you, in South Africa, cut in Tel Aviv, and part of a consignment nicked off a dealer in the Antwerp Square Mile. There you go. Down the hatch. Yeah, you might want to run it under a tap first. Pleasure. Hang about. Hang about. Oh, I can feel from this there's no key card inside here. Mm, yeah. But to be fair, you know, it was it was always gonna be tricky, wasn't it? I mean You just swallowed my payment. I know, I know. I just need a little bit longer. I haven't got a little bit longer. No, but, 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 I'm sorry. 
I am. I'm sorry. You know, I ain't going to let you down. No, you're fucking not. Because if you do, Butch will devise a method whereby he can retrieve that diamond from inside your tum-tum. A process neither of you will enjoy very much. Hello, Jack. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, thank you very much. No offence, but I've come to realise that people approaching me these days usually means they want something. I'm not some bloody charity worker on the high street. <clears throat> so, you here visiting someone? Or is it to do with Richie? How often do you come here? Most days. She deserves that at least. I didn't know, but... I'm sorry for your loss, Jack. Well, she always said she'd be the widow with me killed on duty trying to put the bad boys away. Oh, so, uh, she didn't know? <laughs> that I was actually working with the bad boys. No. Well, yeah, I reckon she knew. But she never said anything. Anyway, she was always good at turning a blind eye. Bless her. Yes, well, as fascinating as all this sounds, we have slightly more pressing matters to discuss. Cool. Blimey, O'Reilly. All these years, and you haven't changed a bit, have you? I'll take that as a compliment. Whatever rocks your boat. So, what's all this about, then? And remember, I've done my bit. Your bit? <laughs> Your bit? You haven't even started, Houghton. Rich is inside. <laughs> I know. Silly old bugger. Whatever was he thinking of at his... at our age? <laughs> yeah, it seems that getting caught was part of the plan. What? Why would he want... It's a prison break, right? He needs your help, Jack. Lizzie, this isn't my world anymore. We know you have a contact on the inside. A fellow member of the Brotherhood. I do not want any part of this. Do I really need to remind you how much dirt my father has on you? No, 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 no. Rich has pulled that one on me before. You're walking around free as a bird because my father kept shtum. Your bit, Mr. Houghton, hasn't even halfway started. Look, Jack, you know I wouldn't ask for help. We didn't really, really need it. Oh, this is funny. You two doing the good cop, bad cop routine. Please, Jack, Richie and I... I am not doing this for you or for Richie, and especially not for her. I'll do it for me. Anyway, I've got fuck all else to do nowadays. Our old friend Jack Houghton's got a mate in here. I'm not one of the funny handshake brigade. Good Christ, not the fucking Masons. Yeah, all right, I don't care for them myself, but without this bloke, we're going nowhere. Yeah, once off this wing, there's another four doors between us and freedom. You see, that was a nice challenge back in the day. <laughs> yeah, picking locks involves kneeling down. That plays havoc with my back, not to mention my knees. So when do we go? Well, assuming Chaz comes up with the last piece of the puzzle, what do you say to tomorrow, right? I'll go and pack my bags. <laughs> Now, that guy is a fucking legend. Well, there goes the neighborhood. So what's Farrow doing here? Something like this doesn't happen out of the blue. He's here for us. Can I rip his head off? Oh, here we go. Well, it might come to that, but I don't want anybody getting into any trouble. Last thing we need is somebody being thrown in the hole. Farrow's a scheming cunt. Whatever he's up to, he'll make his move first chance he gets. That's why I pay down a healthy wedge for those guys. Yeah, but nothing's changed. We still go tomorrow, OK? Slick Vic, it's an honour. <laughs> you know, never really cared much for that nickname, <laughs> but um, thanks all the same. You know, we need someone like you in here. Calling the shots. Yeah, I thought that you had the um, esteemed Mr. Briggs running things in here. Yeah, uh, that old fucker's lost the plot years ago. You know, you can't even score a bit of blow in here these days. You mean there's, um, there's no connections at all? Fuck all. He insisted on shutting the whole thing down. Drugs are bad for you and all that shit that he preaches. Right. Well, maybe you and I can do a bit of business together. You governor, though? Might be tricky. Uh, no, you just leave it to me. Uh, I'll take care of that. You just concentrate on um, the muscle and customers. All right. 
Well, you can count on me and my boys. And how many would that be? 25, guaranteed. Might be more, if they know we're teaming. Ask around. Find out who's um, missing a bit of that and some of that, OK? Tell them I'll bring in anything they want. Oh, that's just double your army already. You know something, my friend? I think, after all this time, the mighty Richie Archer is about to meet his Waterloo. <laughs> Apparently, you wanted to see me, ma'am. I don't like being told what to do, especially with a gun being pushed into the back of my head. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, And I but... don't like being interrupted, either. I was wondering why you were so keen to be here. It's just that I've got an old score I need to settle, that's all. Is anyone else scoring out of this? Ah. So, this nocturnal clandestine meeting is just for you to tell me you don't want drugs in your neck, is that right? Ah, got it. It's about percentage, correct? I don't know what you mean. 25. <laughs> I'm flattered you think I look that young. 30? I do look after myself and eat well. Perhaps that's clouding your judgment. 35. Let me step into the light. Perhaps the shadow was hiding my laughter lines. Yeah. I can see clearly now. You're definitely 50. Full of vitamin D. Good for your bones and teeth. But you haven't got any real teeth left, have you? You keep talking like that, you won't have any left either. <laughs> Mr. Farrow wants you to join him. Did you just hear something, Roy? No, Richie. How about you, Butch? Not a dicky bird, mate. I said, Mr. Farrow wants you to join him. Do you know how much this stuff costs? Less than a tin of dog food. Can you believe that? Dogs eat better than we do. Mind you, I like dogs. I'd be the last to begrudge our canine friends a lovely gourmet dinner. Oi! Oh, yeah. I'm talking to you, you geriatric cunt. Yeah. Now you go and tell Mr. Farrow that when I'm ready to talk to him, I will talk to him. Until that time, he can fold his arms and wait. Now, are you going to be able to remember all that? Or am I going to have to carve it into your face with my little plastic knife? What's going on? I said, what's going on? My friend here was just recommending the veal. Apparently, it's to die for. <laughs> I'll tell you what, whatever mug he's sharing a cell with Butch tonight, I better wear a gas mask. <laughs> oh dear. Hello, Richie. Nice to see you. It's been a long time. Not long enough. Hey, come on, mate. Don't be like that. You don't mean it. We're just two boys from the old neighborhood back together again at long last. Why are you here, Vic? You know, I've been rehearsing this for the best part of 30 years. And now the moment's here. Oh. I'm kind of at a loss for words. Um, I don't know. Uh, fate? Um, karma. Um, Karma's a good word. Let's go with karma. Yeah, it's very zen of you. I must say, I never had you down as one of the enlightened. Oh. Enlightenment's a good word. Like the day I found out who stitched me up. Now, that was a fucking enlightening day. Oh, please. You're not still claiming your innocence, are you? Innocence? No. I never said I was innocent. Far from it. I'm no saint. Like you. We both know that I should never have gone down for those killings, right? Never in a million fucking years. Well, it's too bad nobody's listening, isn't it? Uh, 
Not at the moment, they're not, no. But they soon will be. Soon, everyone will know what you and that low-life piece of shit out and did. OK, you've shown your cards. One card. Your queen. Carmen. Now, it would be tragic if something unfortunate were to happen to her, wouldn't it? Yeah, whatever you're thinking, Vic, I would strongly advise against it. <laughs> oh, spare me the fucking tough guy routine, will you? Doesn't wash with me. I've known you too long. Anyway, if any harm were to come to your queen, it would be totally down to you. From now on, Richie, her safety's in your hands. <laughs> Carmen hires me. Dad, where have you been? I'm afraid things have got a bit complicated around here. Complicated? What's happened? Where are you? It doesn't matter where I am. I just want you to listen to me really, really carefully. I want you to pack a bag, go and stay with a friend for a few weeks, OK? Dad, what is going on? Carmen, sweetheart, I love you dearly. Don't ask any questions. Just pack a bag, get out of that house now. Yes, please. Chinese restaurant. Jimmy, it's me. I'm sorry, mate. <laughs> Just tying up these... A couple of loose ends we talked about. Yeah, listen, we got a problem. Carmen might be in danger. What do you want me to do, Richard? I want you to get back to Spain as soon as you can. Call Carmen and protect her. I'm on my way. And, uh, I might have to change first. You better be bloody joking. <laughs> Count yourself lucky this time. OK, so there are those photographs of the boys. Ah, oh, Richie. He's still got it, hasn't he? Is there something I should know about you two? Oh, Richie! <laughs> Hello! Is he? Are you all right? Uh, not exactly, no. I haven't got time to explain. Listen, I need you to do something for me. I need you to go to Jack Houghton, ask him if he'll come in here and see Vic Farrow. Vic Farrow? He's in here. I don't know how he's in here, but he's in here. Are you safe? <laughs> Depends how safe you think prison is. No, but listen, Vic is threatening to go after Carmen. What? Talk to Jack Houghton. Ask him to bring in the Farrow tape. He'll know what that means. What does it mean, Richie? You don't need to know that, Lizzie. Just ask Jack to bring the tape in for Farrow. I'm really worried, Richie. Don't be. <laughs> Bye. You are going to break me out of here, aren't you, Richie? A man of my word. Look, Farrah's just a complication. But your fixer hasn't come through. You should have stuck Farrah in a sack with a couple of breeze blocks and dumped them in the Thames when you had a chance. When I told you to, in point of fact. I thought I'd done the next best thing. Anyway, you know I don't like killing people, unless, of course, they're trying to kill me first. <laughs> I always thought that was an odd trait of yours. <laughs> I know you're there, Harry. Fuck! I wish you'd stop doing that. It's what I do. Now, what do you want me to do? I've got another little errand for you. I don't do errands. Snatch and grab, bring him here. Vic wants to have some fun when he gets out. I don't do errands. What? Just fucking do it. I'm not some henchman you bark orders at. You're someone Mr. Farrow pays, which means you do what I tell you. Which means I can call you whatever the fuck I want. But do as you're fucking told, old man. The details are in the envelope.
Your friend Jenny. Remember her? Oh, of course I do. God rest her soul. Well, her death... No, her murder. She... Well, you know what happened. Yeah, I know she didn't take drugs. She was made to, and that makes it murder. And we all know who was pushing drugs back in those days. Yeah, Farrow. Exactly. Anyway, Richie wanted me to set Farrow up with something that will put him away forever. Scotland Yard had a mountain of unsolved cases in those days, and I pulled a good one. A gangland slaying, as they used to say in the press. So I cobbled together enough evidence to put Farrow in a room with a dead body. Things were so much easier back then. So what's on this tape? Some gobby Geordie scrope, Fennec, I think his name was, was hauled in for something else entirely and coughed up to the old bloody thing. If we pressed the charges against him, our whole bloody case would have collapsed. So you hid the confession tape? Yeah. Well, where is it? It's safe. It's very simple. You meet Farrow, you give him the tape, he'll call off his dogs and Richie can move on with the escape plan. What's on that tape is enough to get Farrow released and with a golden fucking handshake thrown in for good measure. You okay with that, are you? I just want my father to see my mother one last time. So, Detective Inspector, here we are then. He's just plain old mister these days. <laughs> you know something? I'd have given odds saying you were dead by now. How'd you make that out then? Well, coppers like you. Take away the job, what's left? Fuck all, right? Most of you end up in a single room with a bottle of scotch and a length of rope for company. Let's just get on with this, shall we? I just kill him with my bare hands, I really could. Lizzie, look at me. It's gonna be all right, trust me. But do you really think you can... Well, it's okay. Is everything in place? What well, Vic's the problem, isn't it? You know, I hate being outmaneuvered. I like control and order. And Vic is out of control. I mean, he's seriously out of order. Yeah, but, Richie, if you get blood in your hands, you might never get out of here. Look, here's the truth of it, Lizzie. The boys and I chose to be in here. Maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. I mean, God knows we've all done enough to deserve it, haven't we? <laughs> what about me? I mean, have you for one minute even given any thought to how I might be feeling? Oh, no, you move on, you, you, you get on with your life. <laughs> You're just a bloody idiot, aren't you? Hey? There was me thinking we might even have half a chance. Oh, is it? No, I'm sorry. It's just not good enough, is it? No contact. Sorry, Mr. Riley. Rules are clear, Archer. something if you were to uh, fortunately die tonight from a massive fucking stroke you'll at least have done one good thing in your miserable dog shit life you know what Farrah? i think i'll hang on for another couple of years just to piss you off mate <laughs> i hear that you've not been having a lot of luck with your ip19s Two knockbacks in three years. Three and four. Right. Well, for your information, the new governor would be forced to give you a single cell if you uh, prove to be a threat. Did you know that? You mean you want me to kill someone? Well, <laughs> that new cellmate of yours, the big prick, I could do with him out of the way. And uh, if that were to happen, well, hey, presto. Two weeks in segregation, and um, when you get out, straight into a single cell, all on your own. May your plans be dark and as impenetrable as night. And when you move, fall like a thunderbolt. Are you taking the piss? I was quoting Sun Tzu. I know when someone's taking the piss, okay? You want to watch that fucking tongue of yours? 
or I'll rip it out of your fucking throat quicker than you can say psycho fucking nut job. Do you understand? Yes, Mr. Farrow. Good. David. I know you're here, so you might as well come out. <laughs> I knew it. Mr. Farrow says hello. Am I missing something? Yeah, a few brain cells. What? What did you say? Let's get this over with. Where the fuck is Lizzie Davis? Safe. I told you to bring her here. There are rules. Oh, fucking hell. Don't start with all that old way bullshit. This is the 21st century, Harry. The craze are dead. The old school rules went out years ago. No women or children. A job is a job. Money is money. Now get out there and bring her to me. Do you know who she is? I don't fucking care who she is. Mr. Farrow wants a grab, so Mr. Farrow... Where the fuck are you? Hey! Mr. Archer says goodbye. Fucking prick. Can't say I have. No. I thought you would have, given your background. What the fucking hell do you know about my background? You know your way around a cadaver. You're considered to be something of a craftsman. Who have you been talking to? I hear things. <sighs> yeah, I'll bet you do. Come on, sunshine, what's going on? You give me the silent treatment for days. Then all of a sudden, you're going on about acid baths. Potassium. Hydroxide. It is. Alkaline. Well, pardon the fuck out of me. I was just trying to make conversation, exploring shared interests and so forth. That's it, is it? That's the only reason? Actually, no. Vic. What about him? He wants me to kill you. Oh, yeah? So why haven't you given a pop yet? When I kill, it's because it's going to amuse me. Not because some little jumped-up barrel boy snaps his fingers. I don't particularly like you. You're loud, uncouth, and your personal hygiene leaves a lot to be desired. But still, I'm not interested in killing you. Oh, thanks for the warm glow. I believe your friends are in trouble. Made my darling daughter. I... First of all, I don't hear from you. Then you tell me to pack up a bag and go. And now Jimmy turns up and tells me that you're in prison. What is going on? Sorry, mate. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just, I just need to be sure you're safe. Don't worry. And uh, you didn't tell anyone, right? No, I didn't tell anyone where I was going. Yeah, I know. I know. And I'm sorry. Richie! Sweetheart, I'm gonna have to call you back. Something came up. <clears throat> what the fuck's going on? Who 
you all right? I'm swinging in a fucking hammock here. Looks like Vic is making his move. Really? I wouldn't have noticed. Fucking one of my Georgie boy, come out to play. Come on, where are you? It's the postman. <laughs> come on, George. This is not the way to treat an old friend. Haven't you pricks learned? Turn around and fuck off. I'm unstoppable. Come in, Victor. Hello, George. How's it going, mate? I am sorry I haven't popped in earlier, but I've been busy. What do you fucking want? Well, you see, I've been trying to uh, work out in my head how long it's been since we had that one-to-one -one together. I can't put a date on it, but I seem to remember you had to be carried out. <laughs> yeah, well, things do change, George. I mean, while you've surrounded yourself with muscle, and um, lived off your reputation. I've been building a reputation with my own hands, George. You're always a nasty fucking mongrel. Right. Should have been put down years ago. Yeah, well, unfortunately, no one had the guts, did they? <laughs> so you think no one cared enough? You were just an afterthought. Something to be got rid of when proper business had been done. I can see you know it's true. You're a fucking pest. An annoying fly that no one could get rid of. Tell me. Is that Anne Marie there? My daughter, yes. Well, it's a bit heavy with the shade around the edges, but, um, well, it's not bad, I suppose. What? Tell me, how is Alice? Don't you talk about her. Oh, it's just that I heard she was in a bad way, you know, um, Alzheimer's, isn't it? I mean, that is a terrible illness, George. Come on, um, it makes you forget everything and everybody. Hey. Please. It's funny you saying that, um, she's your daughter. Didn't Alice ever say anything to you? She what? never mentioned... No, well, she wouldn't, would she? She was beautiful, though, back in the day. A real head-turner. I bet she's a fucking mess now. Age is a cruel thing. Doesn't take any fucking prisoners, it's a bit like me. Come on, make your move. What with the Alzheimer's, I suppose she doesn't remember the night that I showed her what a real man could do to her body, to um, her mouth, to her fucking... <coughs> I used the George, like a piece of fucking meat. And when we were done, she could barely fucking walk. I was surprised that she kept the baby, George, though. Honestly, you um, never once looked at Anne Marie and thought, I think there's a little bit of Vic in there, no? You're lying. Yeah, how sad. Even now, you can't admit it. You can't deny death, George. And I am death. 23rd of July. 1973, that was the last time that you and me had a one-on-one. -on -one. I wasn't carried out of there, George. I dragged myself out. Well, this time, I'm walking out. I'll get this clown off me. George Briggs is in danger. What? Get someone up there, now! Go on, go on, take on Briggs, go on. Oh, no. Sir. He 
He's dead. What do you mean he's dead? He's dead. He's been fucking stabbed. For oh, God's sake. Oh, fucking rip me, Ted. Stop him! Stop him! Stop him! Paul, why don't you fuck off, you long streak of paralyzed piss? You fuck. Richie. Hey. It's tragic what happened to George. You better be fucking sure, man. Shut the fuck up. Man. Hey, I can see you're upset. Listen, if there's anything I can do to help, you just say so. Well, you could die slowly and painfully. That'd be nice. No. I intend to lead a good and full life somewhere outside this shithole. And thanks for that tape. Got my legal team coming in this afternoon. We're gonna listen to it. Then we're gonna decide how much compensation I'm gonna have from the authorities. Oh, and by the way, that whole Carmen thing, magicians call it misdirection. You sent Jimmy off to Spain to look after your beautiful daughter, right? Should have been here trying to save Lizzie. You know you got a shit-eating grin. Well, grin big because you're going to be eating an awful lot of shit. Your associate is dead, and Lizzie is alive and well. Bollocks. You're lying. He's not lying. I don't know about you two, but the novelty of this place is fading fast. Yes, I'm beginning to think we've outstayed our welcome. Sir, you need to see this. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck right off. That fucking ain't mine. Perhaps but this definitely isn't yours. What do you mean, sake? Go on. Fuck off. Lock them all up. All prisoners back in your cells immediately. Immediately! Excuse me, Mom. I was wondering if you received my application. Keep away from me. Keep your distance, prisoner. I was wondering if you received my application. I said step away now. Now! I'm so sorry to about your father. Please, I really don't need your sympathy. You really are just like him, aren't you? <laughs> yes, I am. And I'm very proud to say so. My mother passed away in the middle of the night. I wasn't going to tell my father until he was safely away. I thought he might simply give up and stay in prison. Well, at least they're together now. You think that's how it works? I don't know. I just think it's better to hang on to hope, that's all. Well, if there is a heaven and a hell, I think my dad would need Richie to help him escape again. <laughs> They won't release his body until after the inquest. It could be weeks. They say they've got the man who was responsible, but we all know who really did it. He is the devil. Well, if, if he's not the devil, he comes a close second. I'll leave you in peace. Lizzie, I'll still help them escape. 
It's what my father would have wanted. There's no point in us both being heartbroken. The plan's still on. Jack, you in? Do you know why I'm here? Oh. Okay, thanks. When? Well, it's got to be tonight. The food here is awful. And the view from my room is not much better. You fucking idiot. You don't know why I'm here, do you? You what? All you had to say was you wanted to be with her. I never said I didn't. No! Shut the fuck up and listen to me for a change. You have an amazing woman here who really, really likes you for some unknown fucking reason. But the pair of you are perfect together. And these planets in alignment moments don't come along that often. But when they do... Jack! But when they do, you grab hold of them. You grab hold of her. And you keep hold of her. Because you know... Because you never know when she's going to be gone. <laughs> so... Richie fucking Archer, know this. I'm not putting my friend from the lodge on the line because I want to assist in a prison break. But because... Because... Lizzie deserves a shot at being happy for the rest of her life. You got that? So, get on with it, you flash cunt. <laughs> hey there. Let's have that quite soon, yeah? Watch out. No, no, no. I'll give you one, mate. So you lot getting in Razor's face. That makes us friends, I reckon. Yeah, well, I don't like him. All his sort. Oh, drug dealers. Right, fuck no. So I take it you're not a big fan of drugs, then? Yeah? Oh, that surprises you, yeah? Yeah. A lot of people think because you're young and in prison, then you've got to be banging to the narco, but no. Now, what's your problem with... What's his name? Razor. Razor. What's my problem with him? Yeah, you seem to have something very personal going on between you two. Like with you and that new fella. Yeah, well, if you feel the same about Razor as I feel about that puddle of puke, I could probably help you settle a few scores. Razor killed my little brother. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Ah, well, yeah. You don't really need to say sorry, like. Yes, I do. I know how you feel. Well, fuck you, no, you don't. Yes, I do. My brother was killed by a bunch of awful little fuckers. So believe me when I tell you, I know how you feel and I'm sorry. All right? All right. So what happened? Little brother got him with the wrong lot. I was banged up in here so I can exactly protect him out there and then that one tested a bad batch out on him. Pinned him down. Injected that shit into him, killed him stone dead. Yeah, well, in two weeks' time, Farrell's getting all his connections set up here, and this place is going to be crawling with drugs. His drug. That's why Razor's with him. They're the same. What the fuck am I supposed to do about it? I just don't have the people to take them on. No. Not in the cold light of day, you don't.
Hope you don't mind me dropping by a bit. I just wanted to have a word in your shell line. You fucking low-life piece of dog shit. All this fucking chaos is down to you, isn't it? Me? I think you're crediting me with too much influence, mate. Yeah. Assuming this is a bad cut, knowing you. I never wonder why your brother chose me over you. Don't you fucking talk about my brother! I'm going to ask you a question, and how you answer it is going to dictate how the rest of this goes down, all right? Ready? Here we go. Do you remember her name? Huh? Her name. I want you to tell me her name. <laughs> Whose fucking name? All right, I'll give you a hint, shall I? She was 16 years old. Pretty little thing. Bit of a rebel, too. What was her name? I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. One night, she didn't come home. Her friends, her family, neighbors, they all went out to look. What was her name? <laughs> oh, the clouds part and the sun shines through. Hallelujah. What was her name, eh? Jane. No, Vic, it was not Jane. Oh, no, no, don't, don't do that again. Oh. She was found dead in a squat in Lambert. She choked death on her own vomit. Now, what was her name? Ah! Jenny. Her name was fucking Jenny. Jenny White. Ah. Ah. I didn't force her to do anything. I warned you. Time and again, I warned you to keep your shit out of my manor. Would you listen? No, you fucking wouldn't. I remember now. She had red hair, blue eyes, freckles. And you're right. She was a really pretty little thing. <laughs> and a good fuck, too. Yeah, I think I've had enough of you, Vic. In fact, I think we've all had enough of you. George was right, I should have done this years ago. Yeah, I fucking do. Good, because that's my speciality here. Give him a taste of his own medicine, huh? Take care, son. Try to stay alive. You're going. This is getting interesting. Well, I'd like to stick around and help, but I've outstayed my welcome. Come on, I know you're dying to say it. Hey, we need to eat. Lucky you're good looking, because your jokes are fucking awful. What would you have said then? Come on, get the gear and grab those flares. They might come in useful. Are they going to break through? Could any of the prisoners reach here? I can't say, Governor. The whole prison's open, so it's a possibility. Sir, additional services and extra uniformed officers are en route, sir. You all right, Gov? Just under the weather. Do you want me to take over? I, I, I just need a, a moment. 
I'll be in my office. Why aren't they using the key card? Just let them in. There's only one, I'll deal with it. How did you? I suppose you want to come with us. Richie? Don't worry about him. Yeah, he's all right. All right? The bloke's a fucking psycho. Yeah, well, there is that. I think the word psycho is an overused term. Whatever. Shall we? Oh. That's the mark robber! That is the mark fucking robber! Good luck. The way out's this way. I have a long overdue meeting with Governor Price. And I really don't want to let her down. Quit, you fucking prick! Okay, you plum, give me your best shot. There's no need for that. I'm back off, Butch. Without Mr. Quinn, we wouldn't be on the side of the prison. You up? He's on the square with Houghton. Listen, the right police have nearly got this under control, so we need to hurry up. Come on. What, so I don't get to kill him, then? Oh, shut up, Butch. Keep going. Turn left at the next gate. Oi! Oi, where are you going? I'll go back to the control room. And how are we supposed to get out? No, see, he's going to be in the control room, Butch. Listen, if I'm gone too long, they're going to know something's up, OK? I'll pass you through the last gate. That'll take you to the prison yard. Now, get going. Sounds risky. That's the plan, Butch. David, we can work this out. We... You want your own cell, don't you? Hmm? I, I, I can make that happen. I can get you anything you want. Anything. <laughs> please, David. Please. Please. Shh. Governor. <laughs> He's begging and pleading. It lacks dignity. And to be honest, it won't do you an ounce of good. But I've just pierced your left garroted artery. Now, an educated lady will realize that when I release what is essentially acting like a plug, you will have approximately two minutes to get your affairs in order. Your time. It starts. Now. Is supposed to be open. Can we trust him? Oh, he's a mate of Houghton's. What, a bent cosser? That's hardly a glowing recommendation. Should we go back for him? He's locked the gate. We're stuck here. Hmm. Now that, I know, is a bad hum. I 
need some officers in B-Wing. Richie. Oh, be quiet, Budge. I've been on enough jobs with him to know he needs peace and quiet for this. So much for the fucking Freemasons. Oh, good. Hello, mate. Where you been? Canteen and earwing are secure now, sir. Good, good. Just. What are you doing, sir? Uh, uh, where do we let the incoming officers in? Who requested the helicopter? All right, fellas, you can relax. Oh, come on, don't muck about. There's no time to lose. Time for those players, Butch. So bloody sorry George couldn't make it out with us. Richie, darling, you tried. Mm. And we almost got away with it. Yes, we did. Well, this is goodbye. I wish I could get to the funeral. I know. Do me a favor. <laughs> For this and these and the helicopter, you name it, girl. Look after her. Hmm? Lizzie. Yeah, of course I can look after her. Make sure she knows how much you care about her. You never were very good at this sort of thing. Right. Who fancies a trip to the land of the free and the home of the brave? I thought we were going to America. You sure you want to come with us? Are you sure you want me to? You sure you want to ask that question? Oh. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Hamish. Someone having a laugh? What's wrong with Hamish? Do I look like a sweaty sock? I kind of knew, Boyle. Hamish is a Scotch name. I was doing Scotch. Really? how we steal, the new way. Yeah, sort of takes all the fun out of everything though, doesn't it? Oh, I fucking hate it. Give me a sawn off and a sledgehammer any day. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Sir Edward, pleasure to meet you at long last. Please, take a seat. <coughs> well, to work. Well, actually, before we start, could I ask, weren't you robbed a while back? I'm sorry, you were misinformed. No. No, it was here, in London, not long ago. One of your gold reserves got turned over. Ah, yes, there was an incident, but those responsible were caught. I heard that there was a second gang, posing as armed police officers, who switched the gold. 
And like you say, the uh, robbers were apprehended. So nobody bothered to check that the bullion remaining in the vault was pure. And this is the good bit. The real gold was smelted down, recast, and sold back to your bank at a bloody good rate, as it happens. Can you believe such a thing? The audacity of some people. Why are you here? Why are we here? Well, so that you can prove to us that underneath the Savile Row is a half-arsed decent human being. See, I've got a list of charities here that are particularly close to our hearts. Now, we'd like you to show your philanthropic side by making a contribution to each one of those. Out of your own pocket, of course. I certainly won't be doing that. Yes, Sir Edward, you will, unless you want your name plastered all over tomorrow's newspapers. I've done my homework, you see. I know all about your fraudulent activities, your insider trading. That's extortion. Actually, it's blackmail. Do you honestly think you're going to get away with this? You, you... I don't see why not. Your industry's been getting away with it for years. See, the only difference between our two worlds is that nobody from banking has ever been sent to prison. Oh, don't give me that speech about how bankers have messed up the world. Without the banking industry, the little people wouldn't be able to afford bigger houses, uh, more expensive cars, luxury... You mean borrow to buy? And I can't believe you use that expression, little people. Those people can't afford those things. <laughs> Maybe if they worked a bit harder. Can I go to work on him? Roy, Roy, back off. Go on, have a heart. He's even older than we are. <laughs> All right, Sir Edward, if that deal is not quite tantalising enough for you, let me offer you a, um... What's it called, Roy? Uh, deal incentive. No, no, it's not strong enough. Though. Sweetener. What could you possibly promise me to make me change my mind? I think of it more as a threat, old boy. The gold that was stolen. The gold that was sold back to you. Who did it actually belong to? Yeah, them. And if there's one thing you can be certain of with the Chinese, they are very, very driven in business and very protective of their business. Do the right thing. It will gratify some people and astonish the rest. You're right. That is magenta. I think he's going to be all right. I hope so. Can take it out of you, this job. He looks tired. Needs an holiday. Mm, well, no rest for the wicked, eh? Who are you calling wicked? Anyway, it's you lot that needs the holiday. Retirement, in fact. Don't forget, I, I am the young, young gun, gun on, on the, the firm. firm. Turn it in, Butch. You've been saying that for the last fucking 30 years. Yeah, I don't like that. Unless it's upside down. No, still don't like it. Worth three million. Whew. Three million? I should have been a fucking painter. You <laughs> could always steal it. Is he? What? We've got principles. Never steal art. What, never steal bad art? So what's next, Richie? Are we going to steal more gold? Mm, maybe. But first, I've got to see a bloke about a bird. What bird? Black. About that tall. It's astonishing. I never thought I was going to see it again. Thank you, Richie. Hey, thank you for offering us sanctuary. You've been promising to come here for so long. I was starting to take it personally. Yeah, well, my life did sort of run away from me, if you know what I mean. Looks like it's treated you well, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you again, my yeah, friend. You too, my friend. And listen, we'll try not to be a nuisance for too long, all right? Actually, I was hoping you'd stay a while, help us out. Uh, we're having a little trouble with the Tormina family. Oh, come on, we're a bit too old for that sort of work. With age comes wisdom. We tried our muscle on them, and they're not getting the message. 
But what do you need? A more subtle, clever approach. Subtle, clever, yeah. Well, we can do that, yeah. Yeah, why am I getting the feeling this is an offer I can't refuse? You can refuse. But I got a feeling you want to do it. Drive faster over. 